Welcome to Frank's Diana Explains. Today's topic is an exam question walkthrough about um, digital electronics. This is stuff you should have done last term. Uh, and so, uh, as usual, when we do an exam question walkthrough, please try the question on your own, as I've explained many other times before watching the rest of the video. Otherwise, it will spawn your only chance of doing the question without having looked at the answer first. All right, so stop the video now. And if you're still here, I assume that you have attempted the question by yourself. All right, let's have a look. Uh, with the aid of a suitable diagram, explain setup time, hold time, and propagation delay for a positive edge, positive edge triggered D type flip flop. Well, this for six marks is the kind of um, bookwork type question that you wouldn't get in an open book exam setting. You would only get that if this were an invigilated uh, thing where you had no uh, no internet, no books, no anything, which is not the case this year. Uh, but still, let's see uh, what we would have to say if we were in this setting. And I encourage you, when you do these exam questions on your own as preparations, to also answer the bookwork question, because it gives you a feeling for whether uh, you did understand and retain the part of the theory that's going to be useful for doing the practical side. OK, so what's the setup time, hold time, and progression delay? Well, the, the flip-flop, the, the, the D flip-flop, is something that samples its input on the clock tick. And on the clock tick, it will look what the input is, and it will store that in the flip-flop, and then it will appear on the output. Now, if precisely at the moment it samples, you change the input, then this is going to screw up the flip-flop, and it's not going to work. Uh, and so uh, the flip-flop says in its specifications, well, at the time I sample it, you had better give me a stable input. And so if I sample here, then uh, if this is the time axis, then you had better uh, have had your input not change for a certain time here uh, and not change for a certain other time here. Now, they don't have to be the same. The time here that the input is uh, required to be stable before it is sampled is the uh, setup time. White on white is not, not great. Let us take another color. Um, the time here is the hold time. So after I've sampled it, I want you not to change it for a little while, because otherwise it will still um, screw up the sampling. And then the propagation delay is the time after I have um, sampled, says the flip-flop, uh, until the time that uh, the output reflects the new value that I have sampled in. So uh, if I were to make the kind of type timing diagram uh, that uh, is common in these cases, then I would have uh, the input. So this is my D flip flop, uh, which has a clock and then an input D and an output Q. Then um, so on the rising edge of the clock, I will sample the D. And so this D can be whatever you like, but uh, here it has to be stable all the way through to here. And so this is a uh, set of time is this thing here. And then the whole time is this thing here. And then the output um, Q will be something here and here it will be the um, the value that has been sampled in and so this uh, no sorry uh, how do I delete let me just uh, from here this time here is going to be the um, propagation delay so that's uh, my answer to the part A. Next question. The controller of a car wash machine car wash machine, is designed to produce the following sequence of steps. Water spray, sponge, and heater. First, nothing's on. Then the water starts spraying. Then the water still sprays, and the sponge comes on. Then the water and the sponge stop, and the heater comes on. And then everything's off. 
The sequence starts at uh, water and spray and heat uh, equals zero following the pressing of a button B, i.e. B equals one if pressed and B equals zero otherwise. If B is pressed while the heater is on, uh, in this stage, then return to the step with the heater off and water spray on, heater off and water spray on, which is this, uh, and sponge on, which is this, okay, so return to the previous one, Otherwise, B has no effect until the entire sequence of steps is complete. Draw a state diagram for the system. Let's draw a state diagram for the system. So, uh, we start uh, with um, water spray, sponge and heater all off. Uh, let's just call them 0, 0, 0 as they are uh, in here. The next one is uh, 1, 0, 0. Next one is 1, 1, 0. Next one is zero zero one. Next one is zero zero zero, and I just go through the sequence of these states. Um, so here it says um, the sequence starts following the pressing of a button B. B equals one if pressed. B equals zero otherwise. Um, this is somewhat of a trick question because it doesn't say what what input makes us uh, transition from one state to the next in this sequence because okay if i press the button then i will go through this this and this but there's no button press or otherwise that makes me go from uh, you know the water is spraying the sponge starts sponging and the sponge switches off and uh, the heater starts going on is just basically the passage of time. There must be some other implicit input that says uh, enough time has passed uh, uh, spraying water that I can start uh, doing the sponge, enough time has passed doing the sponge that I can start uh, doing the heating and so on and so on. So this thing is a bit hidden in here that there's, there's no named uh, input uh, that I can refer to to say this is what causes the transition from this state to this state. And in this sense it's um, somewhat dodgy but anyway we'll just go with what the question asks us to do um, and it says um, okay um, I just go uh, from uh, nothing to uh, the water starts spraying uh, and then I go from the water starts spraying to the sponge also starts sponging and the uh, the two things stop and the heater starts going on and then uh, the heater stops and all this stuff happens regardless of pressing the button B except if B is pressed while the heater is on which is uh, from here uh, this state here uh, then return to the step with the heater off what spray on and sponge on which is this one if B is one in here uh, otherwise, B has no effect until the entire sequence of steps is complete. So, um, uh, the sequence starts following the pressing of button. And here, this 0, 0, 0 is actually the same state as this one. So I shouldn't draw a state here. I should just say, uh, go back to here. So all of that happens regardless of pressing the button B. Now if I am in a state where nothing is happening then uh, when the button B is pressed then I start this sequence B equals 1 and if the button is not pressed uh, then I stay in the nothing is happening state. Uh, but this transition here it, it happens regardless of B so uh, I can say b equals 0 or 1, it doesn't make any difference, but there's some, something about time. I'm going to mark like this. And this one also, uh, b equals 0 or 1, doesn't make any difference, but time. Now b equals 1 does cause this transition here, and then uh, the, there has to be enough heating happening here, so again, b equals 0 or 1, and some time sends me back uh, to the initial state, like that. Uh, 
Well, there you go. That's as much as a state diagram as uh, I feel we should be doing for this. So let's move on to question uh, three. Let's get rid of this. So in here, uh, consider the following state diagram. Um, all right, we have four states, and x is an input which can be 0, 1, sends us various places. Uh, and the state assignment s0, 0, 0, s0 equals 0, 0, s1, 0, 1, s2 1 0 and s3 1 1 that's uh, very natural it's just a binary reading of the state number write down the state table state table okay uh, assuming the use of d flip flops for the state registers derive the minimized boolean expressions for the next state functions note that state equals q1 q0 where qn is the output from flip flop n seems pretty straightforward as well um, so what do we do here? Uh, draw, uh, write down the state table. So we have uh, our state is q1, q0, and our input is x. So uh, with q1, q0, this is 0, 0, with an input of 0 or 1, uh, 0, 1, with an input of 0 or 1, uh, 0, 2, uh, <laughs> what am I writing? This is 0, 2. Um, 1, 0 with an input of 0 or 1 and 1, 1 with an input of 0 or 1. So that's our state S0, S1, S2 and S3. Over here. And then uh, where does this take us uh, into Q1 prime, Q0 prime uh, for a um, if I'm in S0, oh no, what have I done? I, I selected the deletion instead of uh, the highlight. So I hope I haven't deleted anything that I didn't want. So when I'm in S0, which is here, if I get a, an input x of 0, I stay in S0. If I get an input of 1, then I go to S1. And so with this one, I go to 0, and with this one, I go to 1. Uh, if I am in S1, with an input of 1, I stay in the same place, and with an input of 0, I go into S2. So with 1, I stay in 0, 1, and in this one, I go to S2. Uh, if I'm in S2, with an input of 0, I stay in the same place, and with an input of 1, I go to the next one. So with an input of 0, I stay here, and with an input of 1, I go to 1. And finally, if I'm in S3 over here, with an input of 0, which is partly deleted, I uh, stay in the same place, and with an input of 1, I go into the next or original state. So uh, 0, I stay 1, 1, and this one, I go to 0, 0. So that's my state table. Uh, I should have earned some amount of these 8 marks. And then derive the minimized Boolean expressions for the next state functions. So let's uh, minimize by doing some uh, Carnot maps. Let's do 2 because I have 2 bits. So I'm going to do uh, q1, q0 prime. So this is going to be the q1 prime. This is going to be Q0 prime, uh, and I'm going to put uh, up here the Q1 and Q0, and down here the X. So Q1, Q0 as 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and the X is going to be 0 or 1. So this is um, my Q1 is 0 here and 1 here. This is Q1. My Q0 is, um, is 1 here, and my x is 1 here. So uh, where do I have this uh, 0, 0, 0? This 0, 0 is this one, and this 0 is this one. So 0, 0, 0 is this cell, uh, and this or the corresponding this cell. 
uh, this has a uh, zero zero it's coming from this zero zero. Uh, this zero zero one over here is this zero zero one and so it's this cell here and so it has zero one zero one zero one this zero one zero is this cell here uh, and the next one is uh, this cell here and so one zero and zero one then this one zero is uh, this one over here again the zero is the top and the one is the bottom so it starts with one zero one zero and one one and then uh, this uh, one one state is this one uh, zero is one one gets one one and uh, one 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 is here which is zero zero so then i look at this and i say how can i take my ones this one this one this one and this one I'm going to take a mini sausage here and another sausage over here. And so this horizontal sausage is with uh, Q0 and not X. So, And this vertical sausage is uh, Q1, not Q0. OK, plus not Q0, but Q1. And that's uh, Q1. 1 prime equals this. Now my sausages in the bottom part are uh, what? I have a sausage here. I can make a sideways sausage here. And this one is a lonely one which uh, has to have uh, three factors. So, um, so this first sausage I drew is um, not Q1 but X. So X uh, Q1 negated. The other horizontal sausage spans uh, on the side is not Q0 and X, Q0. And then uh, the uh, min term here is, uh, where are we, not X, and because it's at the top row, and then yes, Q1 and yes, Q0. So not X, Q0, Q1. And this is equal to Q0 prime. So uh, what did I have to do? Uh, derive the minimized Boolean expression for the next state functions. Um, well, there they are. Uh, I think I finished uh, everything I need to do. So that's all done. Great. Uh, we can go home. I think we should have bagged everything, except that this, this one looked a bit strange, and I'm not sure uh, if they wanted anything else. Um, but this seems like a fair way of answering this question. Well, this wasn't too bad. I hope you enjoyed it. Stick a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more, and see you next week.